So what's going on, Born Family? Welcome to another episode of Born to Talk, where we challenge people to change their perception of mental health. And this is a show where we encourage you to be the best version of yourself by giving you all the tools that you need to do so. In this, in this episode, sorry, we are delving into the mind of a person who is all about personal development, much like us here at Born. This person is somebody that I've followed for as long as I can remember um, and learned a lot from. So I am, I can't even begin to explain how excited I am to have this gentleman on the podcast today. It is an absolute pleasure. So today I'm joined by somebody who is, you probably know him as one of the, your favorite players, trainers, uh, back in the day from just the amount of work he has done with some of the best athletes around the world. Uh, like I said, he's taught me a lot. He's taught countless others a lot at the same time. And again, it is an absolute pleasure to have him with us, folks. It is beyond an honour to introduce the one and only Mr. Alan Stein to Born to Talk. Alan, how are you, sir? I am fantastic and I'm equally excited to be here. I, I appreciate the opportunity and, and look forward to having a meaningful conversation with you and your listeners. Thank you so much. I'm uh, like I said, I'm, I'm super gassed to have you here again. It's a real big honor for me. It's like a, it's like having a celebrity on my podcast, and it's very, very exciting. So, before we continue, would you like to take a second to kind of tell us who you are and what you do, just in case somebody out there doesn't know who you are? Sure, and I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that don't know who I am, which is okay. Um, and you know, I will say that as a coach, you know, the the fact that you found my work meaningful and that it's played a role in your life. Uh, really makes me feel good and really warms my heart. And that's the reason uh, that I do what I do. So, you know, your words are incredibly impactful to me as well. Um, I I spent 20 years as a basketball performance coach uh, trying to help players improve their athleticism on the court. Uh, And then about two years ago, I made this shift over more to the corporate space where now I help entrepreneurs and executives and managers and leaders um, build stronger companies and, and build stronger organizations and businesses using the same principles that I learned through the game of basketball. So I'm still kind of talking about the same stuff. I've just shifted my audience. Fantastic. So you've obviously I found you through basketball. When I started playing basketball, I was looking for somebody that I could kind of somebody that was down to earth, somebody I could relate to and somebody that made things easy to understand. So that's where I found you and then just watched every single thing I could possibly read, watch, consume and it was extremely beneficial. I know that you've done a lot of interviews, obviously, regarding like physical development, um, and a lot of those have helped me myself, but I wanna kind of delve into the mental side of things, if you don't mind, that's what we're about here. So I feel, I feel so many people work on the physical side of things, and they neglect the mental, especially when it comes to athletes, um, things still aren't talked about. So when it, com- it comes to competition, obviously, because you've worked on the physical, but not the mental, the physical doesn't always show, and it's sad to see. So. We're just going to jump right in with the questions today. And to start out, something people will want to know, I'm sure, because the people that know you are going to know about you are going to want to know this. I'm curious what you think it takes mentally. Uh, obviously, we know the physical and working hard and stuff, but what do you think it takes mentally to make it to the highest level? Obviously, you've worked with some huge basketball players, as we can see in, in the background in the video. It's There's some big names there. So what do you think it takes to reach the highest level as an athlete, but also as a person? I believe it takes two things. Uh, one is confidence, and mm-hmm. confidence comes from demonstrated performance. So confidence comes from repetition. It comes from practice. It comes from all of the things you do during the unseen hours. You know, um, when we're talking about elite level athletes, we're talking about when the the gym lights are off and the cameras aren't rolling and the cheerleaders aren't dancing. <laughs> you know, the habits and the things they do then that determines their success when those things are on. Uh, But the same is true for just normal people like you and I, you know, the habits that we have when no one else is watching, um, the routines, the disciplines, those are the things that will ultimately, excuse me, either build or erode our confidence because the only way you can be truly happy, uh, be truly fulfilled, be significant, be successful is if you believe in your heart that you deserve to be, and you can only feel that you deserve to be if you put in the work. Uh, And then the other half of the mental side is the ability to live in the present moment and to block out all distractions and and not get distracted by the past and not get anxious about the future, but to really live in the present moment. Um, I think a a large and and, and I've I've dealt with anxiety on my end. I've dealt with with probably lower levels of depression than maybe others, but I've experienced those things at varying times in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, And I found that. Most of the time when we're anxious, most of the time when we're depressed, 
it's because we're not in the present moment, that we're focusing on something that's either happened in the past or something that may happen in the future. And, and that's certainly not to, to take away any of the experiences that we've had, and, and that's not to trivialize the things that have happened in our past, um, but we need to try to move away from living in the past. So being able to embrace the present moment and earning confidence through demonstrated performance, I think, are the two things that separate performance in any area of our life. And that's the thing. I mean, we, we think of somebody like LeBron or Tom Brady or Beyonce, you know, as performers. But, but Peter, you and I are performers also. Yeah. We perform in everything we do every day of our life. And if you want to improve the way that you perform at work, in your relationships, you know, in any area, you have to learn how to live present and you have to develop and earn confidence through performance. And I feel like what, what you just said, like you've just said, it translates to every single aspect of your life. It doesn't matter what you're trying to achieve. You have to have those two things. And it's funny because one of the things that I've never really had much in terms of self-confidence until the last couple of years, but my self-confidence has always come from the work that I've put in to becoming a better human being, becoming a better husband, a better basketball player, whatever it might be whether it's growing my own business, I just, I put so much work in and that's where my confidence comes from because I know that there's going to be very few people that are going to be willing to work the same way. And as a result of that, that's kind of where that comes from me. Um, and it's interesting. We actually went to see Beyonce last year in concert and it was remarkable for me because the one thing that I always take away, we've seen her maybe three or four times now, but I adore going purely because of her confidence. I just love the way that she owns the stage and everyone else I've seen like performers, like you've mentioned, I love the way they own it and it all does come from practice and while it sounds incredibly cliched you have to practice with mental illness you have to practice with your mental health it's not just something that you can take for granted and I think that's the struggle with a lot of people um, so kind of going on from that it's obviously it's been a pleasure to see you grow over the years from Damatha to pure sweat and many other things in the mix now like you said in the corporate world so you've, you've obviously showed your development over the years um, and we've seen you online growing as a human being as a professional. Um, so what do you feel has been, has played, sorry, the biggest part in your own personal development? So not necessarily, obviously not coaching clients, but for you, what have been the things that have been maybe the hardest that you've had to deal with? Um, but what's taken you to the next level and helped you to keep progressing and not, not stay stagnant? Well, I, I think there's a few things and these are all things that I've learned from from mentors of mine, and that actually leads into number one, and that's uh, everybody should have a mentor of some sort. Um, I, I actually – there's a – I don't know how many of your listeners follow the UFC or mixed martial arts, but back in the mid-90s, there was a gentleman named Frank Shamrock uh, mm -hmm. who was a world champion. He's, he, him and his brother Ken were the ones that put UFC on the map. Back mm -hmm. when it was in the octagon with no rules, before yeah. it became this multi-billion dollar you know, um, behemoth – um, he, he was one of the first original champions and he is one of the baddest dudes I've ever met, but also one of the, the most gentle and genuine and, and just a great, great guy. And he told me something called the plus equal minus system. And okay. he said that all of us should have three people in our life at all times. You have a plus, which is somebody that you would consider your mentor. Uh, there's somebody that's, that's a few years further along than you are, but they've already walked the path that you want to travel. And these are the type of people that can pour back into you and support you and educate you. Then you want to have what's called an equal. That's somebody you would consider your peer, uh, mm -hmm. somebody that's in about the same stage of life, but has the same goals and ambitions that you have. Uh, someone that you can exchange best practices with, talk about the highs and the lows. Uh, and then he said, you need to have somebody that's your minus. And, and he doesn't say that in a diminishing way. He wants you to find someone that you can mentor and that you can send the elevator back down for um, to help them. And that if you always have these three people in your life, uh, somebody that's pouring into you, somebody that you're sharing with, and someone that you're pouring into them, it provides a nice balance that will always keep you sharp and will always keep you moving forward and developing. So I, I think one is, is having that network of people. Um, I know for me... The, the, the biggest challenge I face in continually to grow and develop is making sure that I'm always surrounding myself with people that are better than I am. And I don't mean better as a human being because I don't think that's for any of us to judge, but I, people that, that are more accomplished than I am, people that have done things that I haven't, people that, have, you know, that I really look up to and admire and respect, uh, the more time I can spend invested with them, 
the more that will rub off on me, the more that will uh, get me to raise my game, uh, yeah. the more that will, you know, so it's all about the company you keep. Uh, and then lastly, you know, I carve out time every single day to read, watch, or listen to something uh, either educational or inspirational, you know, something that's going to fill my bucket. You know, it's, it's that old adage that you should learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of truth to that. And I, I work hard to make sure that happens. So I devour podcasts. I devour books. I devour audio books. Um, <laughs> anytime I go speak, um, if there, there's other speakers and my travel allows me, I stay and watch the other speakers and I sit there and take notes just like every other attendee. So any chance I get to learn something new, I take advantage. And I believe that if I constantly put myself in a position to learn new stuff, I surround myself with people that can fill my bucket and show me things that, that they've done that I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, I also make sure to insulate myself with people that hold me accountable, that yeah. get me to do the things that I say that I'm going to do. Um, and, and I keep that plus equal minus in my life. I think that will continue to have me move, move forward. And, and that's ultimately the goal. You know, I find for myself and most of the people that I work with that we all are happiest and most fulfilled when we're learning and growing. Yeah. One of the reasons that we get depressed and, and we get, you know, just kind of in a rut is because we stop learning and growing and we stagnate mm -hmm. with with the, the same old, same old. So uh, I think, you know, and, and I'm by no means an expert on mental health or the, the, you know, the psychology side of things. I just know from my own personal experience when I read something that excites me, I have a little extra pep in my step. When yeah. I go to a, a seminar and I see something that invigorates me, you know, I can't wait to share that with the people that matter in my life. So I, I think those are some things that I, I put focus on. Those things don't happen accidentally. You know, it's not luck. Uh, those things happen because I'm very intentional and purposeful with making sure that they happen. Yeah. And I think it it, as you just said it's not luck you make your own luck in this world you have to go and get what it is you want and I love that plus equal minus I find it really interesting and one of the things that I will always sometimes people might think I'm banging on about it but one thing I will always preach is that if you have some knowledge teach somebody else don't hold on to it because there is no point in having the knowledge if you're not going to share the love and help someone else to develop for me that's really really crucial um, I've met people in my life, I've dealt with people in my life that they can teach you a million things but they don't want to because they want that superiority over someone else uh, to feel like they're more accomplished and I feel like if you can help somebody then you really really should because like you said learning something for yourself yes it gives you a massive massive sense of pride but at the same time if you can help somebody else there's no better feeling for me than helping someone else grow um, and I'm very much like you in that I want to learn something every single day and I feel like you can learn something from everything. So I could be watching something that actually, in the grand scheme of things, I'm not overly interested in. But if someone's passionate about it, I can learn something from them. So for me, Most certainly. yeah, as cliche as it sounds, every day is a school day, I guess. Like you can learn something every single day. So, Well, you know, two thoughts, that, and, and I love what you just said there. One, you know, I'm, as you probably know if you follow my work, I'm a little bit of a quote nerd, and I love <laughs> quotes, and I always have. And one of my favorites is, you know, a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle, mm -hmm. uh, which means, you know, me pouring into you or you pouring into someone else, that doesn't take anything away from me. All it does is it adds to the person that you're trying to help. And, and I don't believe that life is zero sum. Uh, I don't believe that in order for me to win, you have to lose. I don't believe in order for me to beat you, I have to keep everything to myself and not share with you. You know, I, I think if you come from a real place of service where you're trying to lift others up and you're trying to pour into them, you know, that's absolutely the way to go. And, and you yeah. said it there. I mean, I, I have a pretty robust bookshelf, which I'm proud of. And, you know, as I look at it, I've probably read about 80% of the books. I haven't read them all. And, and mm. I have a shelf that's designed for the ones that I haven't read yet. But after I read a book and I've taken notes on it, my goal is to share that book with somebody else. It's give it to somebody else because it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't need to sit on my shelf as this kind of artificial trophy it mm -hmm. needs to be, let me give it to someone else and then maybe they'll pass it on to someone else. And, you know, as I sit here and look at my shelf, I'm proud to say that the shelf would probably be four times as big if, mm -hmm. if I didn't give books away. Of but course. then as I'm looking at it, I've got, you know, a hundred books in front of me right now that are doing no good on my shelf. <clears throat> I need to try and give those out to some other people. Um, so hopefully that they can have a good impact on them the way that they've had on me. Yeah, of course. And I think going back to what you just said there is with, if you're sharing something, 
it doesn't take anything away from you. If anything, it adds to you because it gives you a sense of achievement for one. It gives you that sense of pride. But from a selfish self-marketing point of view, if you give information to me, for example, I will go and tell somebody else, you should go and check out Alan's work. They will go and look at you then. So it's just one sure. big snowball. But I feel like if you can, going back to the candle analogy, if you can burn bright and help someone else burn bright at the same time, that you can't stop it when it's multiple people constantly trying to progress. There's nothing you can do to stop that. And for me, that's one of the most beautiful things is, is just seeing people progress. When somebody sure. gets something, when something clicks, it's just such a magical feeling. Well, you know, and I also, I, I have the humility to understand that, I mean, I'm 42 years old. So a good portion of the stuff that I share is not stuff that I've made up. I haven't invented it. The only reason I know it is because other people have poured into me, either yes. through the books they've written or the videos they've created or actual mentors that have taught me this stuff. So I kind of look at it as it was never mine to begin with. So who am I to hold on to it and try to, to bogart it and not share it with anyone else? If, yeah. if you share something with me, I, I should first show you appreciation for pouring into me but then I should try to magnify that and get that out to as many people as possible. And, and ultimately, in the, the leadership space, the coaching space, the self-development space, all of this stuff has been said for decades and decades. Now, each of us might internalize it a little different. We might package it a little different. We might put our own tweak on it. But, but I'm not saying anything that, that coaches and, and trainers and leaders haven't been saying, again, long before I was born and it'll go on long after. So I just feel it's, it's our duty and our responsibility to pay it forward. And, and if we have a platform that people are attracted to, use that to actually create some change and help people. Absolutely. And I think you see so many people that are like we addressed earlier and like you mentioned is people are kind of dwelling in the past and i understand that that happens with things like mental illness and with self-development because you have to learn from your experiences but sometimes the reason people get anxious and suffer from depression and other illnesses is because like you said they are stuck in the past or they are so focused on the future that they can't live in the now and that is one of the most important things so i'm i'm curious about something with you um sure so Obviously, this goes for athletes, but even in the corporate world, in any world, to be honest with you, it's going to be relevant. So how do you address the self-doubt that occurs in a person's mind? Obviously, we know that it happens to every single person at some point in their life. There is no escaping it. We know it's happened to the likes of the LeBrons, the Kobe's, the KD's. It happens. You can't get away from it. So when people doubt themselves for a second or even a prolonged period of time, how do you go about addressing that and working towards helping them fix it? Well, again, and, and it's funny that so many things tend to lead back to being in the present moment. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the stem root of self-doubt comes from thinking back in the past at a time where we were inadequate or, or we didn't perform well or uh, we came up short or something didn't work out. And now we're questioning whether now in the present moment we're going to be, quote unquote, good enough to do it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about something in your personal life, professional life, on the court or off the court. Um, I think that self-doubt, uh, it, it stems from, from being caught up in the past. And that if you can focus on the present moment and focus on the task at hand, that will certainly help. You know, I'm also a huge believer that every single thing we do in this world, everything, from this conversation you and I are having to the lunch that I'll have later to a workout I'll get in, it's just another rep. It's yeah. just another at bat. Everything we do in this world is just another rep. And every single rep provides feedback. And mm -hmm. it's up to us to be open to receive that feedback. And I'm also a big believer. And this is what is, has tremendously helped with my own mental health and my own well-being and happiness is I've learned to view all feedback as sterile, as completely neutral. It's not positive and it's not negative. It's 100% neutral. Feedback only becomes positive or negative when we choose to associate feelings or emotions to it. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, every piece of feedback we get, don't worry about whether it's good or bad. Worry about how you can use that feedback to serve you and move you forward. And the alternative to that is how can you use that feedback to cripple you and set you back? And of course, we don't want to do that. And the highest performers, regardless of what the feedback is, they learn how to take that and use it in a way that serves them. And when you think in the broad scheme of things, there are very few things in this life we have control over. Almost everything that happens in this world is something that's beyond our control. 
Yeah. Um, but what we do control is our own effort and our own attitude. And as far as the attitude's concerned, it's all about how we process that feedback. So, you know, I understand that, that people have had a varying levels of things that have happened in their past. Some things incredibly positive, other things incredibly traumatizing, devastating. Mm -hmm. And that's not to take anything away from those experiences because, you know, one thing I've also learned is, you know, I can do my best to have high empathy and high compassion for my fellow human beings, but I don't know what it's truly like to experience certain things. You know, I mean, I, I can only see the world through my lens, um, but I do know that no matter what has happened to somebody, no matter how awful it may seem, they still have the choice on whether or not to use that experience in a way that moves them forward or in a way that sets them back. And, yeah. and again, I don't want to trivialize it by making that sound like that's easy to do because it's not easy to do. You know, people that have had some major things go on, um, but it ultimately is a choice. And you can choose, okay, how, what can I take from that experience that can help me and my fellow, fellow man move forward? And, and that's what the best performers do. And, you know, again, you could break this down just like it was a game. I mean, if, if KD misses the game winning shot one game, he can either, either let that rattle him and, and erode his confidence, or he can go back and watch the game film and look at things he could have done differently to maybe had a different outcome and yeah. then use that information to be better the next game he plays. So where some people might say missing the game winning shot was a bad thing. I could actually say, no, it's not. It's one of the best things that can happen to you because now you'll find out a way for it not to happen again. So, um, and I know that's, uh, again, there's a huge spectrum between, say, missing uh, a game-winning shot and being diagnosed with cancer or having a loved one pass away or losing your job or having something happen to one of your children or being abused. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's not about what's what's worse than something else or what's better than something else. We don't need to play the comparison game. It just comes down to no matter what happens to you in this world, you have the choice in how to respond and how to use that feedback to move forward. And the happiest, most successful, most significant people I've ever met take any situation, no matter how positive or how horrific, and they find a way to make it improve their lives. And that is a very, very, very difficult skill, but it's one that all of us should be working towards for our own happiness and mental health. Absolutely, yeah, and I would 100% agree with that. I mean, like I've discussed with you, I've, I've seen and had some things happen to me in my life, and for me, it was, I spent a long time dealing with those things, but I knew, and again, as cliche as it sounds, like I've attempted suicide a couple of times, but for me, it never worked, obviously, but for me, I knew that I was here for a reason, and one day I'd find out that reason. Now I feel like I know that reason, but everything that you've just said there, I, I genuinely agree with. Yes, there is a, a vast spectrum of things, but you can find something in every situation, I feel, be it positive or negative, that you can learn something from. You can always improve. And I feel like if you can then go and share something, like I've said, I have these experiences, but I can utilize those. And like I've been through that, so someone else doesn't have to go through that. So I can take that experience and help someone else so that they never have to feel what it feels like to to be abused or to be bullied or whatever it is like they can you might be able to find signs to stop these things happening or whatever it might be if someone's been through it you can help them through it and not have to let them face the rest of their lives dealing with that that's not something that i want for people so i think you're right you see people that are constantly learning and even if let's say for argument's sake kd hit that game winner he can still learn from that outcome it doesn't mean because it's positive you can't learn something from it everything is a learning experience and it, it might sound cliche to some people and i appreciate that some people aren't quite wired like that but again it goes back to what we said at the start even if you're not wired like that right now you can still be wired like that you rewire your own brain to take in this information and then progress forwards you don't have to stay as the same person all the time you can you can utilize the tools that you have to then improve and if you don't have the tools you then go and learn to get those tools and it's interesting for me one thing that you mentioned was um going back to people being able to use what they learn or the feedback that they get sorry for their own benefit now that was interesting to me because so many people might utilize their experiences for the benefit of others without re without realizing and i'm not saying that in that they've experienced something and then they're doing it for positive i'm saying that because they want to impress like XYZ or they want to be able to do something for someone else or 
they want to show off or something, it can become quite negative when someone is then kind of taking those things and, and, and again using them in a negative format. So they it could go completely the opposite way. But if you can kind of practice, uh, like you mentioned, living in this present moment, like being mindful, being compassionate, I feel like that's that's one thing that once you master it, you're unstoppable for me. That's something that it doesn't matter what you're trying to achieve, be it basketball, be it corporate, be it anything at all, just losing weight, whatever. Like if you can be in the present moment, I don't think anything can stop you because there's something to be said for being able to live right now. And like you said, it is a skill and it is incredibly difficult to go through something and then be able to share it because you have to then, you relive it. Like I've relived everything trying to talk about it, but now I can talk about it like it, it almost never happened. Like it's just a story, but that's because you have to practice that. I've practiced my mental health, I've practiced talking and I've practiced giving back. So like you said, going back to the start of the podcast, everything comes down to just repetitions. Everything you do in life is another rep that you learn from and that helps you to develop. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So, so brilliantly said. And that's, and as you just mentioned, I know that almost everything I share, I always deliver in kind of a matter of fact tone, uh, because this stuff is basic in principle, but none of it is easy. I mean, living in the present moment is about as basic of a concept as you can have, but it is arguably the most difficult yeah. skill set for any of us. And, you know, that's getting increasingly difficult with, you know, uh, with how many digital distractions we have and, and, and how many things are vying for our attention. So yeah. pouring into that present moment is incredibly hard. And, you know, I, again, I can't overstate enough that I'm not a mental health professional. So if anybody's listening, you know, has dealt with something uh, such as abuse um, or attempted suicide or bullying, you know, that, that I highly recommend that, that they go speak to a professional. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I went and saw a, a therapist, a counselor, a psychologist. I don't know what terminology people like to use, but I mean, I saw one every week for almost two years um, to really help me deal with my mental health and my ability to move past different things. And that's the other thing that I've learned from, we don't want to play the comparison game. You know, when I look back on my life, I realize on the broad scheme of things, I've been incredibly fortunate. You know, the, the lows that I've had in my life aren't anywhere close to the lows that some other people have experienced. However, they were still very real to me and they were still yeah. very, you know, so it's not about, was your situation worse than mine or did that experience, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with each of us figuring out what we need to do to be our best selves. Mm -hmm. And when we do unpack some of that stuff, you know, I find it incredibly enlightening. You know, I, I, I don't know much about your specific situation, but I know that the concept of bullying is something that's very high on my radar because I have three young children mm -hmm. and it's something that, that I, I speak to them regularly about. And, you know, I'm, an, I'm incredibly thankful that I, I wasn't really bullied as a child, but, but I've gone back in my head and tried to think how many times May I have been privy to somebody else being bullied and I didn't step in and do something to the capacity that I was capable of. And, you know, I, I, I have a golden rule that I don't live with regret. You know, I, I, there's nothing I can do about the, the time that's already passed, but I can certainly share those thoughts with my children and let them know that, you know, hey, 30 years later, when I think back on some instances where I could have been much more proactive in preventing some bullying from happening and I didn't do that, you know, I hope my children will take advantage of that. And, you know, they may be bullied themselves. There might be something that causes them to feel that they need to bully someone else. They mm -hmm. might be privy to bullying, you know. So I also try to have incredibly open conversations with them. And I know with the bullying one in particular, that many times the reason someone bullies someone else is because they're insecure about themselves and they, they hate themselves and they 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 think that temporarily they'll feel better if they make someone else feel worse than they do. Mm -hmm. So as counterintuitive as it will to say, I, I often I feel bad for bullies because I know how bad they're hurting inside. Now yeah. that bullying is one hundred percent unacceptable. No you know, no no exceptions. I mean, there there's it's it's absolutely unacceptable. I mean, mm -hmm. however, I think the key to improving any level of happiness with any of us is raising our empathy and compassion and saying, hey, that person doing the bullying, that is 100% wrong. We're not gonna tolerate it, we need to end it. However, let's not just stop there. Let's try to dig to the root of why this person feels the need to tear somebody else down. What is it that's hurting in their life? And you know, uh, hopefully there'd, 
there'd be some compassion there. And, you know, th these are things that, that come up all of the time because I want to make sure that I'm laying a foundation for my children so that they don't have to experience maybe some of the things that other people have had to go through. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I can't, I can't agree more. And I feel like the idea of, com of comparison, I feel like comparison is just one of those things that is so detrimental to our growth that obviously there's positive comparisons because you might look at someone and say, okay, I want to be able to do that. But at the same time that can consume you. So I feel like if you're comparing yourself to someone else, if you'd like, it's all going back to what you said about being present, instead of comparing yourself to someone, just focus on yourself and develop yourself and things will come. And that's one of the most important things I've ever learned. But it's interesting what you said about the bully. And I'm, it's not actually many people you hear talking about it like that. And I'm so thankful that you just said it is, if a bully is doing that to someone else, there is something going on in their life. So yes, like you said, it is completely unacceptable. It should not be happening and it should be dealt with. Yes. Yep. However, at the same time, let's go a little bit further. And instead of looking at it in black and white, we look at it in all the shades that it is and you find out why that's happening to that child. Because instead of just saying, stop bullying someone, you're, you're not making it any better. You're not. They've still got their issues. So if you can say, stop bullying someone, or like, why are you taking your issues out on someone else? Find out what the root cause of that is, like you mentioned. You can change somebody else's life because they're struggling. And if you can help them, help them. It's not as simple as someone's just, okay, so 95% of the time, I'm sure, 99% of the time, I'm sure, people aren't bad. People aren't bad people. They aren't born bad. They aren't born good. We are molded into what we become. So if someone has that inside of them, there's a reason for it. And we have to find the root of it to help them progress and help them live a fruitful life and to help them live a life of no regrets and of compassion and empathy. And I feel like that's a really important thing to do is instead of just looking at something as like a blanket statement, just kind of seeing what's on the outside, you have to look deeper because it's not always that simple. Always. Yeah, it very rarely is. And that's why I think, you know, uh, again, I never want to make any ass uh, assumptions, but I, I think Many times, if you're the one being bullied, then you probably feel internally like, well, something's wrong with me. Why is this person picking on me? And, and you start to have this, this, this erosion of confidence, this self-loathing, and you feel like, I don't deserve it. And that's, if we can reframe that, and that's what I try to do with my children and say, no, the bullying has nothing to do with you. Yeah. It has everything to do with this other person. And they don't quite have the emotional... Uh, fitness to be able to, you know, share their feelings in, in a in a healthy way. That they're choosing to do it in a destructive way, and 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 I realize with really young kids like I have that that's probably too much for them to process. But yeah. you know, I'm sure with the work that you've done on yourself now, at least I would hope you've realized that any of the bullying you received, it had nothing to do with you. 100. It had everything to do with the other people, and yeah. and I, I'm I'm hopefully that's something that gives you a little comfort now. But I'm sure was incredibly painful when you were younger, but, but you're right. And, and just, you know, suspending a kid or even turning around and punching them in the nose, which they're certainly deserve. It doesn't do anything for the greater good. That's a, that's a temporary fix. And the real key is figuring out why is this person acting this way? You know, are they bullied by their parents when they get home and it's the only way they know, uh, are they so insecure about something that the only way they have any type of confidence is by tearing everybody else down? Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when you think about the analogy of if you're in a city, you can either build the tallest building or you can tear down every building around you so that you have the tallest building. Those are two ways to approach it. And, and bullying tends to tear everybody else down. So I think these are things that are incredibly important for us to discuss. And, and I also know, at least from my own experience, that one of the most hurtful emotions or feelings that any of us can have is feeling like we're alone. Yeah. Feeling like we're the only person that feels something. And I would imagine that if if you're getting picked on in the schoolyard, you feel like you're the only person that's going through that. And and that also adds to kind of that erosion of self-confidence and self-belief. It's like, well, what's wrong with me? How come I'm the only person that's getting bullied or picked on? And mm -hmm. that's that's a really hard thing for for anybody, but especially a child to deal with. And yeah. while you know, you and I have lived very different past and we've had very different experiences. There's very few things that either one of us have gone through that we're 100% alone on. Somebody else out in the world has gone through things that you and I have gone through. Maybe not exactly like we have. So, so no two things are identical, but 
nothing we do in this world, I, I would hope that anybody feels completely alone because you're not. There's there's somebody out there uh, who could who can share and 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 share in what you're going through. So I think the more we can bridge these gaps um, with each other and know these things, the more helpful that can be. A hundred percent. And I, I wholeheartedly agree because it's, this is one thing that I do with something I have on Facebook called the born community is creating an environment for people who have dealt with things, whether it's like you mentioned, like you and I, yes, we've had, we've led completely different lives and we've had different experiences, but we st- our end goal is still the same in helping other people. So I created this community and I've created born out of that is I don't ever want anyone to feel alone because that's exactly what I said earlier is I remember that feeling. I remember the feeling of being alone and while I knew I wasn't, there was people around, you kind of, when you're in that, you shut everybody else out for protecting them and because you you might be scared to say something or you don't know how to say it and that's completely fine too. But the one thing like Alan just said for everyone listening is you are never ever alone. There's always somebody out there who has dealt with something similar or has struggled with something else that they might be able to relate and be sympathetic towards what you're going through. So it's very, very important to constantly be talking. And, and while the specifics may be different, you know, there's a few human conditions that all of us share. And what I learned, especially through two years of counseling, is um, shame is an incredibly toxic emotion. You mm-hmm. know, when we feel shame about anything, it doesn't matter what it's about, that that is incredibly toxic. And and we need to find a way to, to, to free ourselves from that. So while what you've experienced in your life might be different than what I've experienced. We've shared similar emotions. You and I have both been scared at certain times in our life. We've both been uh, insecure. We've both had shame. We've both been really happy. We've both been, you know, those are the things that should, should, you know, create a bond between us. So you've had different experiences, but you've felt shame before. I've had different experiences, but I've felt shame before. So that's where we're in common. We both know what it's like to feel shame uh, or to feel fear or to feel insecurity or to feel happiness, whatever. And that's what we need to use to build the gap. So it's not about, you know, okay, you were bullied and I wasn't. That's not why we're, it doesn't matter that we're different in that regard. You've experienced something in your life that has made you feel shame. I've experienced something that has made me feel shame. That's where we need to dive into is the things that make us more alike instead of the things that make us different. And that's what I mean where your specific instance, maybe someone else hasn't gone through exactly, but the way it made you feel, there are other people that feel the same way. And that's where, at least for me, and it it sure seems like you you are very similar, that just being able to face these things and own them and, and be able to talk about them in a healthy and productive way is an incredibly liberating and freeing experience. I mean, I think one of the reasons I'm so happy now is because of all of the baggage I unpacked during therapy mm-hmm. and was able to face these things that I was trying to hide from myself. And now, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with myself, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've got yeah. some things about myself that I think are great qualities, and I've got some other things that probably need some work, but I can smile and say that they're all part of who I am, and I embrace them. Yeah, and I don't think that could have been said any better. I feel like if you've, you should, we should embrace our our imperfections because that's what makes us us. And that's the most special part of things is, yes, like you mentioned, just because someone else hasn't been sexually abused and I have doesn't mean that they can't understand how it feels. No, they can't understand what it feels like in that moment, but they understand the repercussions of it. They understand everything that comes afterwards, the depression, the loneliness, the feeling that you aren't enough, like all of it, people can relate to that because they've had that feeling. So no, you're right. People can't actually, unless they've been through it, they can't physically understand what that felt like, but they can understand the emotions and the feelings that are attached to that. And as a result of that, you can communicate with each other. So this kind of leads me on to my last question for you. And sure. this is something that I asked every ask sorry every single person that comes on my podcast. And again, I will I keep saying it, but I will continue to ask every single person because every time I ask this question, I get a completely different answer. And from the thirty plus people I've interviewed, every single one has given me a different answer. So the question is: imagine, If you imagine aliens landed, and they you had to explain what strength was, what would be the Coach Stein definition of the word strength? Hmm. That is a incredibly profound question. I've, uh, I think strength is the ability to push outside of what's comfortable 
and continuing to push and until you feel like you're starting to reach your limits and mm -hmm. and i don't know that any of us ever get anywhere close to reaching our limits what we're capable of i, I think the vast majority of us uh, yeah don't even come close to doing what we're capable of but strength is the ability to keep pushing well past comfort because comfort's something that all of us crave and embrace and actually default to, you know, unconsciously is to make things as comfortable as possible. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's probably my best definition of strength. I love that. And again, it's another different definition of strength. Everyone else has given me, like, don't get me wrong, people get very deep into their emotions and their feelings with it, but every single answer is still being different. And that's what I love about that question is every single person has their own different strength. And yours has been different to every other person but it doesn't mean that it's a, it doesn't mean that it's worse it doesn't mean that it's better it's what you value strength as and that's the important thing there for me so we're going to end on that because that that was very profound and i feel like that's something that people can take away from as with everything else you've said so coach i would love to just once more extend my gratitude to you for everything you have done for me over the years without realizing the impact that you've had on me as a human being, as a man, but also as a basketball player, as an athlete. And I genuinely, hand on heart, I'm not just trying to kiss ass here, but it has been an absolute pleasure and an honor for me because you're someone that I've always looked up to. So it's been an, an absolute honor to have you on my podcast today. Well, it's very mutual. And I, I, I thank you tremendously for your, your honesty and your kind words and certainly for your vulnerability and all of the work that you're doing. Um, I've enjoyed this uh, a tremendous amount. And, and I hope that you know that right now you're impacting people that you aren't even aware of. And, you know, so for you to say those kind words to me, it really reinforces and, and makes me thankful to do the work that I'm doing, but makes me want to continue to do it and do it at an even higher level because uh, mm -hmm. this is what it's all about. But please know that uh, any, anything that I've done to fill your bucket, uh, you're certainly doing for others. And, and I really commend you and respect you and, and hope that you keep doing it. Keep being a shining light, my friend. Well, thank you for that, Coach. I really, really do appreciate it, especially coming from somebody like you.